In this tutorial in PhotoDirector 365, we'd like to give you some tips on adding text to your photograph. There's some nice features in the text tool and we're going to highlight those in this tutorial. To get there, you need to first of all load your photograph and then move to the edit button at the very top. Now at the right side, I'm going to see some of my tools, one of which is a text tool. I'm going to click on it. Now if you notice on the left panel, we have our layers. When I click on it, watch what happens. I have this icon and I can click anywhere in my image. And now you notice on the upper left, it added a layer. The layer will be where my text will appear. And since it's a layer, it's separate. I can turn it on or off. I can delete it when I'm done and I have an impact in my photograph. I'm just going to type the words my title here and we'll see some of the things that we can do to modify it. I first of all can take the mouse and move it wherever I want. And there are other features as well. Now you notice you have a size here and I can highlight the text and then click on any of the drop downs to change the size of the text. But that's not all I can do. Say I want somewhere between 200 and 300. I can actually click on 200, but I can go up here in this area and type in say 250, press enter, and it will assign it to that value. I don't have to use only the drop downs. Now when it comes to the font family, I click on the down arrow and this will load all the font families that I have in my particular copy of Windows. And so I can take any of these and use them as my title font. If you want to add a font to Windows, you can do that and then it will be available to you in this program. Another option we have here is line spacing. And right now it's set to eight. Now, if I move it up, you notice it gets tighter and tighter when I go into the negative numbers. So that's how you can control the line spacing between multiple lines if you have them in your title. The other option that you have here is when you have this drop down like the other one, you can actually type a different number. I have a minus four and a minus six. Maybe I want a minus five. So I can just go in here and do minus five and press enter and it will adopt a minus five. So again, the drop downs are there, but you aren't limited to them. Another option you have is the space between letters. Right now it's 36. I can tighten them up. Here I'm down all the way to nine and it's a tighter issue and I can expand them as well going wider. So this is how you increase the space between the letters. You can also turn on kerning, which basically handles certain letter combinations separately. I'm just going to do that because I like it. You can also obviously do your bold or turn bold off. You can do italic. You can do left justified, center and right. So it's your typical controls. You can also put a border. Now, in, in order to do that, I'm going to increase my font size here to 300. And we'll turn off our italic. Let's do a border. I'm going to click on the border tool. And then it defaults to the last border I used. If I click on the color next to it, this will allow me to pick any color in my color palette. I can pick a custom color, a basic color, or just click here and then move the slider up and down to adjust it further and pick the kind of border I want. Let's take a bright red one so it will show up for us. And then I can click on OK. So there is my border. Now I can control the width in two ways. I can use the slider to make it fatter or thinner. Or I can use the up and down arrows or I can type in the uh, number here to be exactly what I want. So I have a border I can control and I have the face of the letter whose color I can control the same way. If I want to change the letter face. I can go back here again, modify it to my heart's content. So that's how we can change those two elements. The next thing we have is a shadow. When I turn this on, it will give me a shadow. And again, I can use the color picker to control the shadow I want. The most common are white and black. Uh, we'll leave ours at black for now, but you can control the color of the shadow. And the offset is an interesting feature. Let me zoom in on this quite a bit and we're going to look at how the offset works. And now I want to work on the shadow. Let's say we want the shadow to be offset 15. Now you notice this area here. You see the shadow is positive 15 puts my shadow to the right as if the light is coming from the upper left. 
Let's highlight that again. Watch what happens when I turn the slider to zero. Okay, now I have no shadow. When I go to the left, it goes to the upper left. Those are your options. You can't have a shadow to the upper right or the lower left currently. It can go from the upper left to the lower right, but that's all. That's what you have. The other option you have, let's put that back down here, is a text effect. When you click on this, you see that you can warp or manipulate the text in one of many different ways. And if you want to go back to normal, you simply click on this and click the upper left corner, which gives you your normal text. So those are some of the ways in which you can work with text. Now what happens if I want a completely separate text? If I click here, I can enter in more, and it will inherit the characteristics of the last text that you use. But notice what else I have going on here. I can move this around separately, but I also have another layer. So you can have many layers and you can hide or reveal one or both of them or delete them. Every time you use text tool to put something in, it will add that text on a separate layer, which gives you maximum flexibility. And again, you can take any of these text layers and you can click on the effect tool and you can do some of these effects. We'll deal with that in a subsequent tutorial. That's some of the ways in which you can begin applying text to your photographs in PhotoDirector 365.